Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about my top three original fragrances with Troy D from Troy D 247 Mall. And if you like the content guys, hit that like and subscribe button, go over to Troy's channel, also check out his channel, check out his content and subscribe to his channel as well. So first, I'm going to actually give the floor to Troy. He's going to talk about three of his favorite original fragrances from his collection. Troy is a great guy. He's got a lot of good YouTube content. His channel is growing really fast. So do make sure you check out his channel. Subscribe to the channel for a lot more uh, great content. Anyways, Troy, take it away. All right, thanks for the handoff, Phil. And now I'm going to talk about my list, my top three list of most unique fragrances in my huge but really dense collection. Okay, number one for me is Clive Christian X. Clive Christian X. Uh, this is uh, touted as a really expensive perfume, but come on guys, at this point guys, everybody's paying more than Clive Christian X for just other perfumes. Just the other day, I mean, I paid so much for like a vintage perfume that I was like, dude, why are people fretting about with Clive Christian X? Right here? Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, man. So, if you go to my Clive Christian video, I outlined the whole uh, fragrance on the video and I called it one of the most manly scents ever. And in the sense of being a boss man, being a person that actually uh, goes around, does boss moves, and just kills it day by day, or at least tries to, this is definitely the fragrance for you. This bad boy has got rhubarb, cinnamon, styrax, some jasmine, some amber, some cinnamon, very powdery with the iris, and it is just absolutely a unique blend. I haven't seen, I haven't smelled anything else that really has this kind of scent. And it's very, very long lasting, and that's another thing I like about this, lasts all freaking day. Very, very manly, very, very unique, and I would say that, uh, is very different from others it's not boozy it is not like uh, like a like too masculine that would be off-putting but this one right here is just boss that's that's all it is I think anybody even the females if they smell you they're gonna know that you are going boss man today with Clive Christian X okay next up is an absolute rarity in my collection and I was just really really uh, lucky to be able to have this and this is none other than Russian Oud by Arij Lidori. Russian Oud by Arij Lidori. Like this one right here is kind of like one of the most hyped fragrances ever. I think last uh, month or so, a bottle of this sold for like $1,600. And I was very lucky to get the official 10 mil version of this um, before it's completely gone or completely wiped out as well as completely sold at insane prices. So if you're wondering, what does this smell like like this one is one of the most like ultimate like chocolatey fragrances funny it says russian oud and you're probably thinking like oud is, is it supposed to smell middle eastern or is it supposed to smell barnyardy um no this is a masterpiece guys it is a concoction of uh let me try to simplify this chocolate high level musk high level musk which is not it doesn't have the p note okay and super burning agar woods like the actual agar wood that gets burned like it like this the, the scent comes up if you ever seen like burning agar woods how people do that um they they get burning agar wood and they kind of just you know put their clothes like this and they catch all the burning woods well this one here just imagine amazing super spicy super like like insane chocolatey <laughs> chocolatey high level musky and uh, insane burning agarwood scent. Um, oh my gosh, I've never smelled anything like this. And I would say before Arij did some other stuff that to be honest kind of smelled weird to me, this one had to be, has to be like one of his masterpieces uh, because I haven't seen or smelled anything that comes close to how unique this one is. So. Arish Lidori, Russian Oud. And for the final one is Bodicia the Victorious Valiant. Uh, this bottle of mine is actually from the UAE, 
uh, when it came out as an exclusive uh, in, in the UAE. Uh, this is a wonderful bottle that I have of this and if you watched my videos this is probably one of the most or not my most expensive perfume ever. Um, this one comes from the house of Bodicia the Victorious which makes unbelievable perfumes. It's one of the top. Basically this one is orange and vanilla and citrus okay in, in, a, in a masterful masterful blend obviously because it's expensive it smells expensive um, this is like an ultimate like spring summer Ooh. oh man for vanilla lovers uh, citrus lovers who are willing to take the chance and uh, spend some money on this or maybe you can check it out at the gray market this is like some grail level stuff, okay? Um, and if you wanna see the entire breakdown, I have this on um, my videos. All you have to do is go to the playlist, Niche Fragrance Reviews. Oh man. Absolutely classy, expensive, and perfect for spring, summer. I had some of my guys, some of my new uh, friends uh, from Fragcom buy this because I suggested it. They're just like blown away. Masterpiece level, Bodicia the Victorious, Valiant. Okay, so that's my top three guys. For individual uh, reviews on them, I have them on my fragrance reviews playlist. All you have to do is check it out on the channel. But I just wanted to share that and I know for sure that uh, Phil has got his own crazy list as well. The first one I'm going to talk about is Saddle by Svensk Parfums. One thing about this fragrance that I think is super original is that it uses butterscotch and I haven't really heard about that or looking into it, I haven't found a lot of fragrances that use that note in it. So it has this very prominent butterscotch vibe which gives it a nice sweet gourmand touch and I do like gourmand fragrances so this definitely hits the spot. The other thing about this fragrance is it's also quite leather dominant. Now I find the butterscotch is definitely more dominant than the leather for me, but there is a prominent leather note as well. And one thing I really like about this is how it breaks that leather mold that a lot of fragrance houses have done, which is like a, las a raspberry and um, leather note. And you know, that's, there's a lot of great fragrances that do that, but I always appreciate things that do, uh, do things a little bit differently. And this one definitely does that. So you get this nice, rich, saddle-like leather, a very high quality leather, and you get this really delicious butterscotch. So I think this is a really nice uh, fragrance. It performs really well. This one is a little bit more expensive. I think it goes for about $90 for 30 mil, but it is also one that's extremely strong. So this one performs extremely well. If I'm going outside in the cooler weather, for example, this is one I can definitely put on. People will smell it. It'll cut through the, um, through the cold. It will still project quite strongly. And so you do get your value with this, with this one. It definitely um, you know, will last a long time. And I don't usually go more than about two sprays with this one. So very original, not only with the use of the butterscotch, but also the combination with leather. Um, it's, so it's leather done quite a bit differently. And I do enjoy this one. And if you are fans of either of those fragrances, butterscotch or leather, definitely check this one out. I think you can pick up a sample either on the website or uh, from Crystal Fragrances. Next one on the list is a recent acquisition, one that I think is also really great for the spring, and that is Moonlight in Heaven by Killian. Really enjoy actually the new presentation, so you can see the uh, writing now has nice uh, white in there where it didn't actually used to, and I think it really adds to the aesthetic of the bottle. Of course, beautiful blue bottle as well. Really enjoy the presentation of Killian's, and this one is gorgeous as well. Now. What I find interesting about this is that it has a very prominent rice note. Now rice is of course used in a lot of other fragrances. Um, I think um, Pure White Cologne, which is a very popular Creed fragrance, also has rice. And rice isn't as underused as say something like butterscotch. But rice is definitely something that is not used that often and not talked about or not thought about a lot. And this is a really well done, sweet, somewhat gourmandish kind of a spring or summer, definitely evening out fragrance. 
has that very nice tropical vibe to it and it works really well. This opening on this one, very, very beautiful. The opening on this one is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I actually found it a little surprising, I will say, that this one doesn't have florals mentioned. I do get a bit of a floral vibe, especially right on the initial burst, but this one quickly transitions into a really nice, amazing mango note that really feels like somebody had just cut open a mango right in front of you. That beautiful rice note starts to come out, make uh, become a lot more prominent, and it actually reminds me a little bit of there's this Korean um, rice drink that's actually really tasty and it does remind me of drinking those. It's very refreshing, very tasty, a nice sweet kind of a rice fr uh, drink. And this definitely has this sort of tropical vibe. It works nice in the warmer weather, definitely on a somewhat cooler, not blazing hot evening. This is absolutely fantastic for those occasions. So original fragrance in my opinion, Moonlight in Heaven, not talked about enough from the house of Killian either. Last but not least is one I've talked about a lot on my channel and that is Blackmail by Kerosene. Really enjoy this one. It is such a beautiful oud fragrance and if you want something that is oud done in a very digestible, what I feel like is a fairly mass appealing way, this is definitely one you want to check out. This is oud, this is incense, and it is sweet dried fruits, and it's done really well. So the oud is definitely prominent, uh, but not in any way barnyard or skanky. It just comes off as a definitely uh, different smelling kind of a wood fragrance. And in there you get this really amazing incense, and the incense really is what sets the oud off in my opinion, because it gives it this smoky, almost like it's burning kind of vibe. So you get this almost embery, smoky vibe that goes along with that um, wood, the oud, and it smells fantastic. It almost adds a little bit of a spiciness and to really balance that out, there is a touch of sweetness from the dried fruits and it works really well by dialing it back just a little bit to give it um, that extra bit of roundness, that extra bit of character, and that extra bit of mass appeal to make this one actually, in my opinion, quite a nice and easy to wear fragrance. I think this is one that is quite gentlemanly. This is one I can see easily wearing to a fancy or formal occasion because it just works in that classy uh, kind of a way, in my opinion. Although I can definitely see, or and I have, worn this one casually as well. One of my favorites from the house, absolutely gorgeous, um, really, really well done fragrance. And it does perform really well as well. And so for me, I get about 10 hours performance this one. It does last a long time. It projects pretty good as well on the opening. And it is one that does leave a nice sillage, does have a nice scent club. So for me, the performance is good. I also do enjoy the presentation, so I like these uh, metal face plates that the kerosene brand has and of course I think the price value proposition is pretty good you get 100 mil for $140 and for basically a quality niche fragrance that's quite good so I appreciate uh, kerosene quite a lot I'm a huge fan of kerosene and this is probably my favorite second being unknown pleasures or follow those are my three favorite but great house and I definitely think worth checking out Anyways, guys, that is it for this one. Hope you enjoyed mine and Troy's top three list for original fragrances. Again, if you haven't, go over, check out Troy D's channel, hit that subscribe button, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Both of us releasing a lot of great content and a lot more planned. So both of us appreciate that. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.